The Nuclear Regulatory Commission says it hasn't been able to get a satisfactory answer on a key safety issue about Westinghouse's new reactor design. NRC staff experts have been talking with Westinghouse for a full year about this. Regulators say this AP1000 shield building does not meet some safety standards. Westinghouse strengthened uh, the building to withstand aircraft crashes, but that seems to have made it too stiff to meet earthquake and wind requirements. The issues need to be resolved before utilities can get licenses to start building 14 planned U.S. reactors. Westinghouse Vice President Ed Cummins says he doesn't expect the Commission's concerns to have a significant impact on construction schedules. He says the company's plans of a, is planning a series of tests to prove the structure's safety to NRC. For more, our executive editor Margaret Ryan is here. She has lots of experience in nuclear uh, coming from um, uh, dozens of years at Platts. So this problem too stiff for er earthquakes. I, I don't understand this. <laughs> Well, it, actually, it's a concept that was approved by Frank Lloyd Wright back in the 1920s when he built the Imperial or designed the Imperial Hotel in Tokyo. For years, uh, people had tried to make buildings stiff enough and strong enough so that when th there was ground movement and earthquakes, they would keep standing up. And that turned out to be exactly the wrong approach. Uh, Wright put his building basically in a bowl of jello. And when and his concept was derided at the time, but when they had a huge earthquake in, in Tokyo, it was one of the few buildings left standing. The uh, the basically the foundations let the building move somewhat. Like they do with skyscrapers now. Right, so and now they flexible. do it with everything. They do it, and so you need some flexibility for things like tornadoes and the the. I mean, it's a proven concept that the flexibility helps it withstand ground force movement and and winds. And so, but what apparently happened was they reinforced the building, they changed some of the design as uh, air, as crashes, aircraft crashes became an issue. This uh, original Westinghouse design dates back into the 1980s, really. And uh, so after 2001, everybody had to look at aircraft crashes, so they, they stiffened the building so that they could say, yeah, we can, with the, this building, which goes over the, the basically the whole nuclear section, they say, oh yeah, it will stand an aircraft crash. And now uh, the NRC is saying, hey, we think you've gone too far, and instead, now you can't meet old, uh, other requirements for right. flexibility. But is this not unusual? Doesn't the NRC constantly question the safety of these designs? Well, what's unusual here is that the NRC has gone public. I mean, they're saying in a press release, they had a uh, conference, a phone conference with reporters yesterday that they've been asking this question for a year. And this is their signal that they're not getting the response and they don't expect. blame us for the delay. Well, no, no, just that. It's, it's, they're saying they're going public and they're saying to the utilities that are ordering, the customers of Westinghouse, guys, get your act together or you are going to face delays. We are not going to be pushed around on this issue. Uh, we are going to insist that we get a good engineering answer on it. So what is the effect? What are the utilities, um, uh, what are the, how are the utilities building this Westinghouse design? Uh, well, there are, there, Duke, there's Progress Energy at two sites in Florida and North Carolina. There's Southern and there's uh, South Carolina Electric and Gas Scana. Um, they are all hoping for roughly 2011 to get a license from NRC to start building a new plant. The first one uh, right now on the schedule is Southern Nuclear at Vodal. Now, they can't get those licenses if the design isn't approved. So for Westinghouse and Toshiba, which owns Westinghouse, uh, the issue now is how much engineering are they going to spend for? You can try to, what the engineers call, pencil whip this away. Mm -hmm. You can try to do calculations that show, indeed, that this building meets all the requirements. Um, if you can't do that, and it sounds like they've spent a year and haven't been able to do that in any satisfactory way, you may have to do what uh, Ed Cummins was talking about, and that is actually build a small-scale test facility and prove that it meets the, it can withstand the forces. Um, this can be done at a national lab. It could be done at places in Japan. And small scale would be good enough to, um, to lead if, to if, it, if in fact it proves out Westinghouse's side of the calculations, which I'm, you know, I'm going to guess are different from NRC's calculations, and it says no, no, this does what it needs to do. But doing something like that is highly expensive and it's time consuming. This could delay any approval of the Westinghouse design for several years. Um, the AP600, a smaller design. Uh, it's only 600 megawatts instead of 1,100 megawatts like the AP1000. The AP600 was already design certified by NRC, but that was before the aircraft crash requirements. Right. Um, but I so, mean, is it possible both can't be done at the same time, that they'd be flexible enough for an earthquake but stiff enough for an aircraft? Well, Ariba claims that it's doing both. 
Now, I mean, they have a design, they have a, a somewhat different containment design where they have uh, two, two separate structures. Uh, the shield building uh, for the Westinghouse design is a single structure. It's actually two, uh, two uh, metal layers with concrete in between. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the Arriva says they designed theirs from the beginning because of European requirements for aircraft crashes. So they have a somewhat different design and a little different approach than Westinghouse does. And they claim they're already there. But of course, they started the certification process with NRC much later. And so they're, they're a couple of years behind the certification process at NRC. But if uh, Westinghouse gets held up with this, they could catch up. And it doesn't matter where they're located. They must be earthquake resistant, even if they're not along near fault lines. That's right. I, well, there are earthquake requirements all across the country. They vary. Obviously, if you do it in downtown San Francisco, it's uh, because we have measured earthquakes there. Mm -hmm. But you know, the most serious earthquake in the US, the one that was most widespread felt, was in, centered in Missouri. It was in 1812. There was a huge earthquake quake uh, that's recorded uh, in, the, in the early uh, Pilgrim Annals in 1675 off the Atlantic coast. You can go, if you go down to Charleston um, in the late 1800s, there was a big earthquake down there. You'll see these metal bars on historic brick buildings holding them together because they were shaken so badly. So there's never really no part of the country where you don't have an earthquake requirement. Some of them assume that the, ma the maximum credible earthquake they talk about right. has more ground movement than others. And it's ground movement over time, you know, how quickly is it going to go? Right. That was one of the problems in San Francisco. The movement is very sharp uh, in California. You know, when the ones out in Missouri came, it's more like a, a big puddle of sand and it moves more slowly, but it still can destroy buildings just okay. as well. So the next move here is Westinghouse uh, probably trying to prove the, the current structure it works for both uh, Absolutely. This is to build a fire under Westinghouse to say either change your design prove or prove it. Okay. Margaret Ryan, thank you.